So let's just go ahead and integrate the purine salvage pathway. I want to give you the big picture. And that is that purine salvage is essential in creating nucleotides from degradation of DNA and RNA. And that's really, really important that when DNA and RNA are going to be broken down, we kind of want to recycle some of those products so that we can make purines again. And so one of the enzymes that helps us recycle those broken down products is going to be HEPRT. And HEPRT is going to help us regenerate IMP and GMP, which are nucleotides. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the recycling bin of guanine and going to turn it back into GMP. It's going to take the recycling bin of hypoxanthine and it's going to turn that back into IMP. So what's important for us to recognize is that patients who have HEPRT deficiency are going to have an upregulation of PRPP, which is the de novo enzyme or the de novo uh, uh, sugar that we are going to need to make de novo purines. That's going to work over time. You're going to have less purine salvage. And now all this recycling bin material, hypoxanthine and guanine, guess what? They are going to be going and forming uric acid. And so that's why patients with Leschnihan syndrome, HEPRT deficiency, are going to have bad purine salvage. And subsequently, they're going to have elevations in uric acid and gout. Leschnihan syndrome, let's integrate it. From a neurological standpoint, these patients are going to have developmental delay and self injurious behavior. In fact, the elevated amounts of uric acid are going to cause striatal dopaminergic damage. And that's one of the mechanisms implicated. The free, um, uh, the oxidative damage in the brain is going to what cause uh, is going to be the basis of what causes the self mutilation. And so that's why you can see like nail biting, for example, from an MSK standpoint, these patients are going to have gouty arthritis. And from a renal standpoint, they're going to have a tendency to form urate crystals. And remember that these are these diamond shaped or rhomboid shaped crystals, which are going to precipitate in acidic pH. And so a couple things to integrate with uric acid stones is the following. Ready? Number one, you have to recognize that they're going to be radiolucent on your radiographs. That's different than calcium stones. And number two, because they form in low pH situations, urine alkalinization may be one of the mainstays of treatment. And so welcome, welcome to High Guru. Integration is going to be what gets your score up.